Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Jacobs. It's seven o'clock on a Monday night. I'm starving. So tonight we're going to make a tamale pie with a buttermilk cornbread crust. It's a kind of dinner that comes together very quickly and it's so delicious it will knock your socks off. First up, center the oven rack and then heat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the only real work this recipe requires is the dicing of an onion. So I thought I'd show you how I go about my onion dicing business. And I'm doing mine on one of these nifty, flexible cutting sheets. So I've removed the root end and the top end, and then we're going to cut the onion through the root, like so, and then peel the sucker. And when you peel, very often the top layer of the onion can be kind of dry. So don't be afraid to remove the very top onion layer. Did I mention that I'm hungry? Okay, now here's the easiest way to dice an onion. I know some people will go this way and then they will turn the onion this way and do horizontal slices, but much easier is to just make cuts, not going through the root completely, but angle your knife to the left so you're always aiming towards the center of the onion. And when you reach the actual center, cut straight down, again, avoiding the root, and then for the rest of the onion, angle your knife towards the right. Once again, always cutting towards the center. Then make a claw grip and make thin crosswise cuts. And when you get to the end, just turn the onion on its side and make little dicings. I'll finish the other half and then I'll meet you over at the stove. And here we are at the stove and I have a 12 inch skillet set over medium heat and I've added about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And when the oil gets hot, Add the onion. I'm going to give this a little stir. And then add some seasonings. Now you could use all chili powder if you'd like, two tablespoons worth. I'm going to use one tablespoon of chili powder. In you go. And going to add one teaspoon of ground cumin because I happen to love cumin. It's not too hot and it has a nice smoky flavor. And for a little bit of heat, I'm going to add one teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper. And you could add two cloves of minced garlic, but since I'm hungry and I'm in a rush, I'm just going to use garlic powder, about this much. I think that's about the equivalent of two cloves of garlic. And then stir all of this together and just let it sit for five minutes or until the onions soften up. I'll come back. Oh, I forgot. Also add a nice pinch of salt. Okay, my onions have been softening for about five minutes. So let me go over the other ingredients we're going to add to this skillet. Uh, I have one pound of ground sirloin. You really want to use a low fat ground beef. You could even use ground turkey if you'd like. Again, low fat. We're also going to add 
a 15.5 ounce can, where are you, of black beans, which I have poured into a colander. And I ran cold water over the beans just to remove the taste of the can. And we're going to add a 14.5 ounce can of drained diced tomatoes. You say tomato, I say tomato. We're also going to add a cup of sharp cheddar cheese, shredded, and some cilantro. Normally, I despise cilantro, but I love it in a tamale pie. We'll also add some fresh grinds of black pepper. So in goes the ground beef, and we're going to remove this little paper topping. And in go the black beans, and the tomatoes, and we're going to use a wooden spoon or a spatula to break up the beef. We, we want the beef to be in fairly small pieces. And you just break it up like this. You can even press it down with the back of your spoon or spatula. And just let it sit for a couple of minutes while it browns. And then we'll flip it over and brown the other side. So I'll come back. Alrighty then. I have flipped the beef and it is all brown and crumbled. So now we're going to let this sit here and simmer over medium heat, oh, for three or four minutes. See you soon. I'm back. It's been about four minutes, and as you can see, most of the liquid from the diced tomatoes, even though I had drained them very well, they still exude quite a bit of juice. Uh, that juice, that liquid, has evaporated. So now I'm going to turn off the heat and stir in the one cup of sharp cheddar cheese. Yum! We're going to let this melt right into the beef and bean mixture like this. And then we're going to add the ingredient that some people hate and some people love, and that is the cilantro. And just give that a quick stir. Oh, the cilantro has a beautiful green color. And then we're going to let this sit for a moment while we make the buttermilk cornbread crust. So I'll meet you over at the workstation. On to the cornbread crust. So what we have here is three quarters of a cup of ordinary all-purpose flour. That's called plain flour if you live in England. And three quarters of a cup of cornmeal. And I'm just using regular old Quaker yellow cornmeal. Nothing fancy about that. We also need, and clutch your pearls for this one, folks, three tablespoons of granulated sugar. And that may seem like a lot of sugar to you, and you can certainly reduce the amount if you'd like, but then your crust won't taste quite as good as mine. And we want three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And then, oh, we also need three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda is going to react with the buttermilk. And we need three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. And then grab a whisk and whisk all of these ingredients really well. Now 
And that's it. Then we have to go and prepare the liquid ingredients. So what I have here is real buttermilk. And then when you buy real buttermilk, be sure to always shake it up well. And we want three quarters of a cup of the buttermilk. There we go. Put the lid back on. And we want one large organic egg. And then we can use the same whisk that we use for the dry ingredients. And we whisk the egg into the buttermilk. And that is that. Then fetch a spoon, preferably a green spoon, and we're going to add the liquid ingredients to the dry. And this is going to create a bit of foaming action. Again, because the acid in the buttermilk will react with the alkaline baking soda. And as you can see, this whole dinner comes together really quickly. And there we go. We just want to mix enough so that all of the dry ingredients are moistened and mine are there. Now you could very well put this cornbread crust directly on top of the filling ingredients in the skillet, as long as your skillet is oven proof and bake it directly in the skillet. However, for a much nicer presentation, you can put the filling in a pie plate. And my pie plate is two inches deep. And I've made this dish countless times, so I know it works very well with this pie plate. I think the pie plate is seven inches uh, in diameter on the bottom, nine inches measuring from rim to rim on the top, and again, two inches deep. And we're going to just smooth out the filling, and oh, this smells so good. I really wish you could be here in the kitchen with me. I so enjoy your company. And then dollop this foamy, wonderful buttermilk cornbread batter directly on top of the filling. Can you hear my cat meowing? I might have to let her into the kitchen. I know my dog is really afraid of my camera equipment. So she doesn't like to come into the kitchen when I'm filming. And that's probably a good thing because she counter surfs. And if I'm not watching really carefully, she will snatch my food. And just smooth the cornbread batter over the top. And we're going to put this on a baking sheet only because in the event that this pie should boil over, we don't want to make a mess in the oven. And into the oven it goes for 15 minutes. I'll come back to show you the finished pie. And here is the star of our show, the tamale pie with the buttermilk cornbread crust. As you can see, the crust has browned beautifully. Again, it was in the oven for exactly 15 minutes. I'm going to let it cool for a moment. I'm going to have a sip of white wine. Probably beer would go better with this meal, but I don't like beer, so I'm having Sauvignon Blanc. And then I'll come back and I'll dish up some and we can have a little taste. Okay, I have both a dog and a cat in here with me. So don't be surprised if you hear some barking and some meowing. 
And look at this tamale pie. Now, I already know that this thing is totally delicious. Let me give you a close up. Because I made it three times last week trying to perfect the recipe for you. And a little taste. Mmm. This is heaven, people. Another little taste. Mm. This is so, so good. And you can certainly play around with the seasonings. You could use all chili powder, or you could add chili powder and maybe some red pepper flakes, whatever floats your boat. And I wanted to remind you that this cooks up so quickly. Well, the prep and the cooking is really fast. So if you're tempted to go to McDonald's for dinner, just remember you could have a tamale pie instead. And I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a little subscription box over here somewhere. And <clears throat> if you're feeling generous, after you subscribe, click on the little bell icon. This way you'll receive notifications whenever I post a new recipe or some other home type video. And I will see you next time very soon. Bye for now.